Hello, everybody. Welcome in. It is Monday, October 11th. And uh, wow, I just thought I thought I missed my brother's birthday. It is today. So I did not miss his birthday. All right. Uh, hope you're doing well. Um, I'm pumped for today's show. Uh, today's show is a story of a lot of grit, a lot of resilience, a lot of pushing out of comfort zones, a lot of just, um, and it's just a cool story overall. I've been in contact with Kim a little bit here and there, and um, I'm really excited to have her on the show today. So um, if you're newer to our community, if you're newer to the show, um, you can uh, text the letters, <clears throat> excuse me, W-U-L to 813-296-8553. And I just got my text message right now. So you can see that um, you get a text message every single morning from us. Uh, and it just, we don't pitch you. We're not selling stuff on our text message platform, at least not yet. Um, and uh, you can get a little text message. You text the letters W-U-L, make sure it doesn't autocorrect. And then uh, we'll send you a little message every single morning, right before we go live. There's also a little Facebook link in there. You can just tap the link. It sends you right into the live, uh, super convenient. So uh, if you're newer, text the letters WEL to 813-296-8553. And if you all would put a little clap emoji or a party emoji or celebration emoji or something in the chat uh, to welcome Kim on the show. Kim, what's up? Hey, Matt. Good to see you. Good to see you too. I'm excited you're here. Pumped that you're on the show. Yep, um, me too. too. You, uh, you have been working hard and <laughs> doing some really good marketing. I don't know how long ago it was, but uh, I think you were on one of our webinars on Thursday, maybe, and uh, we were going through your stuff. And this was like early, early on, I think, when mm -hmm. I was like, just, you, I think you had just started your content and you were starting to like make a little bit of a shift in terms of like editing and I think you got a ring light and stuff. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. okay, dang, like she's, she's like actually going after this pretty well. And it looks like she's doing a good job. So um, I'm excited to see where it's went since then. Um, why don't you tell, you know, everybody who's here, uh, give them a little backstory, tell them a little bit about you. And, um, you know, I, you've got a little MLM experience back in the day, you're working mm -hmm. a full-time job, all of that stuff. Just bring us into your world and how you came online. Uh, well, um, so just to kind of piggyback on what you were just talking about, um, yeah, I was on that Thursday webinar a long time ago, um, a few months ago. And at that time, I was, I think I was at 800 followers and was, you know, how do I get more followers? How do I, you know, how do I get to a thousand? And, um, you know, you coached me through, uh, you looked at my account, you coached me through it. And um, yeah, I don't know if you can see my account now, but right now I'm in 82.6 thousand followers on, on TikTok. And that was just in the last maybe three months. So, um, wow. you know, so yeah, I have been working hard. Uh, so my my journey into um, online, you know, having an online business uh, started at the beginning of this year. But okay. you mentioned MLM and it was about, uh, I don't know, maybe 18 years ago, I was in an MLM company and the product was amazing. Um, it was just a really great product. But I kind of, you know, I, I knew that after that experience, I really never wanted to do another MLM. Um, and yeah. not that that's not that they're bad. I mean, just it wasn't for me because yeah. I'm I'm not really very good at going out and, you know, grabbing friends and family and saying, hey, buy this awesome product. But I knew at some point I wanted to do um, an online sales um, or an online business. And um, after COVID last year, I was laid off for a while. And that really, you know, I, I thought my job was was pretty secure. And after that happened, uh, because I was one of 40 people that was laid off in an organization of about 500 people, it taught me that my job is not secure. So I mm -hmm. decided in 2021 that I was going to start something, a side hustle or something that was going to bring an in extra income just in case, you know, going forward, 
that I would lose my job. And I don't think it's going to happen, but you just never know. And in today's economy, um, anything could happen. So, so, um, you know, I got started like a lot of people do. I was scrolling through TikTok. My daughter got me started on TikTok and just scrolling through there and um, somehow stumbled on to the make money online side of, of TikTok and up popped. Um, I don't know if I can say another marketer's name. Yeah, um, that's fine. Okay. So Stacy Law, um, yeah. she popped up and I was, you know, instantly like, oh, okay, what is this? <laughs> And um, so I saved a video and I kept going back to it, kept going back to it. And then I finally just decided to pull the trigger and go ahead and, um, you know, take the take the 15 day business builder challenge. And, you know, I've been a, I've been a teacher um, and an educator for the last 30 years, kind okay. of burned out on doing all that. And so I'm really I'm really ready for a change. And. I got into the 15 day business builder challenge and it just opened my eyes to a whole nother world. Never done any marketing, never done any sales. Um, so, you know, um, not only was I blown away by the, the value in the course, uh, you know, I, 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 I joke and I say, I didn't know a sales funnel from an oil funnel, you know? <laughs> so it was, it was all new to me. And, um, and then I, I bought the blueprints and, very, you know, also felt that there was so much value in that as well. And still, still getting value from that. Uh, it's pretty yeah. amazing that, um, you know, just that, just that course and being able to take that, um, you know, the, the Facebook community and, you know, your training on Thursday afternoons and, um, you know, just really super supportive. Um, I've never felt like I was doing it alone. I've always felt like if I could reach out, I've, I've reached out to Drew a few times and he's been super helpful. So yeah, it's been, um, it, it's been a great experience. Cool. That's really, really cool to hear. Um, it's one thing that I think is very underrated is sort of just the ability to have somebody to get an answer somewhere <laughs> like like i don't know i don't know maybe it's not always on like a webinar maybe it's not always in our facebook groups but somehow some way um there is sort of this energy in in our in this community that's very helpful and very giving i think mm -hmm. so yeah that's really cool um what uh so when you first got started like i i feel I'm just kind of drawing on a feeling I had from the first time that you were on that webinar and stuff and you were starting to create content. Mm -hmm. Like what, was that a struggle? Like, was it hard? Was it different? Cause you're a teacher. So like my guess is I, I was a little bit surprised at how good your content looked and like just how smooth and cause sometimes like people who have no experience with social media, mm -hmm. uh, they'll go on there and it's just kind of like, I don't know what to say, you know, and, and it's like, hi, how is it going? <laughs> and your content felt a little bit more like, oh, I, I think Kim kind of understands how people learn and digest information, which is literally your job. So it makes sense. Right. But what can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So um, one of the things that I do in my nine to five, which I'm still there, is I do promotion, not promotional, but educational videos all day long. And so oh, wow. um, so people give me the content that they want in their videos and then I produce them on Camtasia. And I've been doing that. Well, I've been doing multimedia. Um, my undergrad was in 3D animation. That okay. was back a long time ago in, in the mid 90s. And okay. uh, wow. I graduated at the same time that Toy Story came out. And let me tell you, I was like completely blown away and, and also humbled. And I said, yeah. you know, I'm never going to be, you know, I mean, that was just, I was editing on a, you know, a Pentium. I don't even remember what it was, but it was, <laughs> you know, it, it would take like four days to render um, 10 seconds of video. So, um, so I've been doing this for a really long time. So that, you know, asking me when you're asking me, how do I make my videos look good? Um, so I've been doing video for a, a really long time. So I know wow. that very, very much back and, you know, back and forward. Um, so, you know, I take those ideas and that, um, and apply that to what I'm doing on TikTok, and it's paid off. Um, wow. you know, 
I've done a lot of, you know, how to videos I've done, you know, just, I've done a lot of different things. And I started out kind of trying to do these really slick, um, you know, uh, you know, high production videos. And I realized that very quickly that those just, nobody wants to see those. So they really want to see, you know, they want, they want to see the stuff that's going to provide value, but also they, they, it doesn't matter if it's high production, they really kind of want to see the low production stuff. And so, you know, I can do that too. Yeah, totally. And man, isn't that so interesting? I've always been fascinated by mm -hmm. the idea or just the reality that sort of these, I, I don't know, sometimes grainy, sometimes weird looking videos that are just like, yeah. you know, low production value, but there's something like just, Ooh, that's interesting mm -hmm. to the human mind. Um, that's just so fascinating. Hey, it's interesting too, that that does not apply. It doesn't carry over into like cinema, like, Right. In cinema, if I see that, I'm like, I'll walk out of the theater. Like, this is not very, this isn't well done. But on social, it's so different. It's so interesting. Um, what, like, so when you like sit down, you're going to create some content or something, um, and you think through different skills that you've learned. Like, what are some of those skills that you've learned? I'm so fascinated by that because I'm, I'm mostly fascinated by like, um, like the intersection of, of people's, existing skills and um new skills that they're learning and i think those are really underrated i feel like yours might be in in the video realm but like people have all of these different skills that they've learned and don't typically apply them into this space because this space mm -hmm. feels so new and overwhelming and coming online and creating TikToks and and trying to educate people or whatever feels a bit like like Dave always gives this uh, description where, um, you know, when he was getting clean, his, his, uh, it, I don't know if you call it advisor or mentor or whatever said like, Hey, you know, you're, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you're, you're not, you're not getting dumb. You're just getting clean. <laughs> and like, <laughs> and, uh, and, and he uses that same approach. I first heard him say that at a mastermind a few years ago where he said, Hey, look, you didn't come online and just suddenly get dumb overnight. Like, Hey, right. you're a smart person. You figured right. this out, apply some of your skills to this and, and learn new skills. But anyway, I'm, I'm fascinated by your previous skills and how you've been able to apply them. What are some of like the skills, like in that production and in your um, background that you feel like is giving you a little bit of a boost or a little bit of a um, advantage? Well, uh, you know, so, so I, I do want to say that a lot of what I've learned about content creation, I learned from you. <laughs> okay. And so I, so I keep a spreadsheet. I do a lot of research. Sure. Um, I'm kind of a data nerd. And cool. um, so I call my data driven content creation. Mm. So I keep the spreadsheet. I do, um, you know, I go out, I look at other people's content all day long to try to get ideas. And then I try to put my own spin on that. Yeah. Um, and then I think the other thing that's been really helpful is to, um, you know, besides the research, being able to then recognize, okay, um, this worked for somebody else. So will it work for me? Is this something that I can do? And, you know, still seem authentic, but, you know, use those, um, use those ideas. So um, that's one thing. Like I do research all day long, and you know, I, you know, I'm not make I'm not really doing my own research, but I'm, you know, using other people's ideas, I guess, and then and then putting my own spin on them. Yeah. And and then in terms of just content creation, I don't know. It's um, you know, I'm also in addition to have been an, been an educator, I'm also um, have been a, a working artist uh, for, for many years. Mm. And so I do have an art background as well. So it, it that all plays into it too. And, and kind of, you know, the video, um, knowing how to compose a shot, knowing how to, um, you know, use camera angles and that, which I haven't really explored a lot with, but I think I'm going to start doing that um, just to make it a little bit more interesting. 
And then, cool. uh, you, you know, we were, you were talking about um, low, low production. And I was thinking in TikTok, that works really well, but it doesn't work in YouTube. And that's going to be my next foray is, is mm. into YouTube and starting to create more explainer videos and, yep. um, you know, and that kind of thing. So then they're going to be, you know, the long form video, I think has, has potential. I think I've got the short form mastered at this point. So now it's going to be going into long form, which is, which is more high production and does require um, a lot more work on the post-production side. Yes, at least somewhat more work for sure. Yes, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. I think um, I think some people overcomplicate that because again, I, the thing that I always teach is I come back to like, hey, it's it is really truly the content that wins. Yes. But you're right, there is some content that's out there that's really good, but it's just like you watch it and it's like starting to fall asleep here, you know? And it's like, I, the content is good, but like, you've got to figure out how to produce this a little bit better and make this a little more engaging, I think. I think you're right. I yeah. in, um, in the short form, form, so I wanted to go back to what you said about, you know, um, doing a bunch of research, being data-driven, sort of keeping a spreadsheet um, and working through a spreadsheet or just even using it for reference, right? As mm -hmm. like a little, like all good marketers have what's called a swipe file. This is something that old school copywriters used to use way back in the day. Um, and all direct response copywriters, the, the really, really good ones um, who used to write magazine ads and stuff like that. Yeah. They would keep a swipe file printed off in, in a little folder that they could just pull out and they're like, man, I need an idea for a headline. I'm going to go through, oh my gosh, what a great headline. Mm -hmm. um, and from that, they would then create ads and marketing content for that. And I've told people on TikTok, I, I just, you know, everybody who's on TikTok, I've always just kept, you know, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse at this point, but I just keep saying over and over, hey, look, the algorithm has already told you what's working, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's not that it's going to be a hundred percent of the time, right? So sometimes you'll create a video that somebody made that got 2 million views and you'll get 200 views. Exactly. Well, there's, could be a lot that goes into that, but in or general, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's can go like the other the, way too. yeah, it's like the 10% rule, like maybe one out of 10 hits, but that one out of 10 is really worth it. And it's a much easier predictable game than just sort of, you know, guessing and hoping and wishing like maybe this yeah. will work today or maybe this will work. I don't know. Right. Um, it, right. it sets the odds in your favor a little bit. And then I think that doing that for a bit, it, I, I can see clearly, I feel like where you're at in that stage of going into long mm -hmm. form content, because do that for a little bit and you start to learn the niche in the industry deeper and you mm -hmm. gain a deeper knowledge and you start to really see some of the questions you see that's the big one is you start to get a lot of feedback fast and you start to get a lot of questions coming at you and mm -hmm. you quickly learn what it is that people are really after yeah and so from there right. you can take all of that data and all of that knowledge not to mention um you're also you know peaking curiosity with people, you're driving a bunch of curiosity, opening minds of people of what's possible. Mm -hmm. And then now you move into more long form content where you can drive people to a YouTube channel and you can get views on that content for years. Mm -hmm. Then you're in a place where it's like, okay, this actually feels like I'm leveraging my content, right? Yeah. Cause in the TikTok world, short form, the content's leveraging you. <laughs> the yeah, platform I, yeah. is leveraging you mm -hmm. and your energy and time and creative powers. Um, but on on like the decade and a day recently, um, I started talking about this this dog training guy, and this uh, this dog training guy I discovered this summer. Um, it has videos that rank on Google for. Um, a video he did in 2013 and in 2015, wow. and they still rank on the first page of Google. They have millions and millions of views, and he has mm -hmm. a little online dog training course and a uh, monthly subscription. And um, and Smart. that's where you start to leverage the platform as opposed to the platform yeah. leveraging you, I think. And that seems to be where you're going. And most definitely, um, you know, I'm looking at the long term, uh, you know, what I'm going to be able to do with this. And I, um, 
you know, like I said, I, this opened up a whole new world for me and I'm actually taking a digital marketing course right now that I, I mean, I feel like affiliate marketing is, is just a piece of that. So I'm learning about SEO and SEM and, you know, Good. diving, you know, digging in more into email marketing. How can I make that work better for me? Um, because I, I don't feel like I'm getting the results that I want from that. So I think I need additional, you know, additional training in that. And then copywriting, you mentioned copywriting. So uh, it's so critical. And I'm, mm. you know, I'm just starting to dig into that as well. Um, I've been a writer for, you know, I actually I tutor writing at the local community college to students who right. are struggling in writing. Um, but we don't teach copywriting, we teach academic writing. And so, you know, I've, I've been kind of, you know, s dropping those nuggets in there with, with my students and like, you know, this is all well and good, but when you graduate, you're going to need to learn copywriting because that's really where the money is. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's it, yeah. So you, you kind of yeah. drop those nuggets in there, but I do think that that's really critical too, is knowing how to write, write good copy. And yeah. I plan on leveraging that into eventually um, building courses. And so that's, um, it's another skill that I have that I think I can apply to this, to this business. Yeah, I totally, the copywriting piece, it is just so funny to me because when I first was able to start place at placing ads as a marketer, like really all that I could place was Google ads, like Facebook hadn't launched their platform yet. Uh, TikTok wasn't, TikTok had was eight years until it wasn't even invented. Um, mm -hmm. It wasn't even musically at that point. And all you could really use were attention grabbing headlines in your ads. That's really all you could do. And yeah. it's just funny because of how that translates so well to video. It's crazy to me, but mm -hmm. it really is whether it's creating a thumbnail and a headline on YouTube or whether it's, um, you know, uh, uh, on TikTok creating a, a really great three second intro, like all of that stuff really applies. And I also wanted to say, you know, a lot of times, uh, Kim, what I see people do around this time, which sounds crazy. I mean, I know there's going to be people on here with a hundred followers or 500 followers and they're going to be like, what, why would people do this? But a lot of people stop what's working and they go to YouTube or they go to Instagram or they go to Pinterest or they go to, you know, whatever other platform they feel like maybe I could get better results there. And mm -hmm. then what ends up happening is um, they sort of stop the existing sort of engine that they've started. It's mm -hmm. like they, they stop the car, they get out of the car and <laughs> they get into a different car and start to try to drive that one and expect this other one to just keep, keep doing their thing. Right. Um, I think that's a big mistake that I see, um, mostly for people who are starting to, like you had, uh, your first high ticket sale last month, I think. And, um, two so far <laughs> two, hell yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. I yeah got so, back, so that, that was exciting. That's really exciting. And I feel like to get that sort of boost of momentum is, is huge. Like mm -hmm. my first high ticket sale that I got. Oh my God. It was, um, I, I had zero, I actually had zero dollars in my bank account. I wish I could find, I, I might still have the screenshot, but I actually had zero. Um, granted we were super young and, you know, in college, grad school or whatever. And it was just a weird, like somehow I had overdraft or something and I got a $3,000, uh, like transfer. And for me, that was like, two months well, worth of salary. Cause I was yeah, working in yeah. broke barista job. So I was like, Oh my God. Um, but it, it was, I don't know. It was just a moment of belief, but I mm -hmm. feel like at that point, it's like, sometimes there's like a man, this needs to go faster. I need to speed this up. I need to, but really it's kind of just at that, that sort of, we can now sort of climb point mm -hmm. and, um, and it's right then that people divert focus. So I just wanted to say with the YouTube thing, it has to be sort of a layered on top of what's yes. already working, not a stop what's not. And then because that's a piece that a lot of people jump over and jump and jump. And then they're like, man, 
I was doing really well before. And now I feel like I've kind of lost all my momentum. And it's like, well, yeah, you got to keep that existing cash flow coming in and add existing sort of mm -hmm. uh, uh, on top of it, so to speak. Does that make, I don't right. know if that makes sense or is helpful, but. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I totally agree with you. I, I like to say that this is a, a marathon and not a race, but it actually is a marathon after a marathon after a marathon. And you need to be consistent and stay focused. I, I think, um, is it uh, Calvin Hill that says, um, focus on one course or one thing until success. And you know, um, it's, it's, I think that's a good message. And, and what you're saying is definitely a good message. You know, if it's working, um, you know, don't fix it. But um, yeah. I also noticed like recently I started posting, not posting, but I started going in, into Twitter um, mm. because I used to be super active on Twitter um, for another reason. But um, I thought, you know, I know Twitter, I know, I know kind of you know, how to do, um, you know, how to make tweets and how to make them interesting. Um, yeah. so that's like a whole other world. And, and, you know, the money Twitter thing, there are people like, I mean, the minute you get on there, they know you're a newbie and they just hit you with all of these courses that are, you know, come over here and we'll teach you how to use Twitter. And there'll be like 50 different courses, you know, that you can't, you have to choose one if you're going to do this. And I'm like, but I'm already selling a course. So, yeah. you know, and then they're, then they're like, Oh, well, I have an engagement platform for you, you know, for $25 a month. So, you know, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, you can get distracted super easily. Um, yes. You know, doing the YouTube thing is really going to be a layered um, it is definitely going to be a layered process. And I only have so many hours a day to, to do this, um, because I'm still working my nine to five. If I weren't, then I think I, you know, I would do a lot more with it, but it's right now it's just, okay, I have to choose and I'm going to stick with what's working, yeah. um, and put most of my efforts into that and make sure that that keeps going. Yeah. And you're already, you know, you said in your current nine to five, you're already using Camtasia. Mm -hmm. um, so like you've already got so like such a head start, like that's so amazing. And uh, just in terms of video production and editing, like if you're going to get on YouTube and you're going to want to produce videos, like you can just pop right into Camtasia and you, you already know what you're doing. You know how to do mm -hmm. everything, I'm guessing. And that'll be huge. Like that'll be really, really huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Camtasia is really, um, I think for a beginner, it's a great program to learn. And it just has a lot of, a lot of possibilities, a lot of capabilities. It does have its limitations. Um, you know, there's, there's some limitations to it, but, uh, you know, I, I think for a beginner, it's a great, great program to learn. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I well, agree. I use ScreenFlow on Mac and Camtasia is basically the same thing. They're very yeah. similar and it's just, it's almost like similar code or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, um, it's, yeah, it's just an interesting game. I, I feel like you're, um, one of the best things, the reason I really like when people start out on TikTok and, and then launch into their YouTube is over the last like two years, I've seen people grow YouTube channels at such insanely fast rates. Uh, it's crazy. And the reason is, is I've seen, the ability, like one thing that I would really look into if I were you is um, just how to create little bite-sized nuggets and drive people from your TikTok to your YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, it's just, it's, I've seen YouTube channels blow up at a rate that were before uh, this, this TikTok took off in the last two years. Before that, it just took so freaking long. It was sure. like, it's just so monotonous. It's like you never ending creating content. And it's like, is this ever going to pay off? And for some people, it just doesn't. But if you're already doing the content, you do a little 15 second teaser and you say full video in my YouTube channel, then people are like, oh my gosh, if you can get one or two of those 15 second or a minute uh, videos, 30 seconds mm -hmm. to go viral, and then you're pushing people to your YouTube I've seen people get thousands of subscribers in a matter of a couple of days to their YouTube because of that. Um, so there's yeah. a really good strategy there that I feel like 
Um, you know, you're data driven, you study all of this stuff, you'll figure that out for sure. Mm -hmm. But that's a really powerful one because, you know, then you can monetize your channel. Then you can start earning revenue from YouTube. Then you can, I, there's a lot that you can do there. That's, that's really powerful and turns into more of like an asset business as opposed to a, just a straight cash flow business mm -hmm. um, of content creation to more like um, building up something that can really be a long term asset because YouTube can, man, yeah, there's just, there's a, there's another layer you get into. I feel like when you get into the YouTube world, that's, that's what I think. I also just wanted mm -hmm. to say that um, I, it's, I, it's, I think it's really cool that you're also getting into the SEO game and stuff like that and learning mm -hmm. that skill because that's obviously crucial in YouTube. Yes. That's everything in YouTube. But, and Facebook um, and, and, you know, Google ads and I mean, all of that. You, you have to know SEO, I think, in order yeah. to, to really do this business well. I think so. I, th I do. Yeah. I think that that's a key piece. I think um, it, I think it gets the only caveat I would say to that is I think it gets overrated to a certain degree because people come to me all the time asking about their SEO, asking about their titles, their headlines, their thumbnails, their all of this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, those are pieces to the puzzle, right? But right. your content yeah. sucks. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we can't and, and that's, and you still come back to the content. It still always comes back to the content. You can grab somebody's attention, but you won't keep it if your content isn't, isn't, uh, you know, isn't, is subpar. Yeah. It's putting a lipstick on a pig. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. Well, cool. That's so exciting. I'm excited to see where that goes because just I'm I'm just so fascinated by this online space, and I'm fascinated by you and your journey, and just I don't know. I I just see a lot of um, yeah. I I, I don't know. You, you don't seem um. I, I don't know how to say this. You don't seem uh, uh overwhelmed or like the moment's too big or something. It seems like from the very get go, it was like your expectation was success. Your expectation was big success. And I'm going to do this and be successful. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think that that mentality that under it, it's not notice how like today we, you haven't sat here and, and talked for the whole 30 minutes about how mindset's so important. And, you know, mm -hmm. you just got to push through, you just got to do it. And, and it's sort of just been this undercurrent that I've felt from you in our limited interactions. And even today it's just been like, no, I'm, I'm going to be successful. I'll figure this out. Other people have done it. I'll figure it out. Exactly. And I think it's just cool to see that from, you know, somebody who's got a nine to five job and, I don't know, maybe isn't quite as entrepreneurial as maybe other people, but you're doing right. the entrepreneurial thing and really blending your worlds, I think, to leverage something, you know, leverage a cool business online that is the future. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, <clears throat> I think, excuse me, to me that that's just super impressive and cool. And I like that a lot. Well, thank you. Uh, that's really nice of you to say that because, you know, I mean, we all have that imposter syndrome and we all doubt ourselves. And, um, you know, I, I will say full disclosure, um, you know, so it took me two months before I actually even produced one video and even started promoting Legendary at all. And I didn't actually start until the beginning of June. I, I did, you know, the, the challenge and the blueprints in March. And it took me two months to, you know, to figure things out. And I think I did have analysis paralysis. I didn't, you know, I wanted to make sure everything was absolutely perfect before I started. My fear was, is that if I start driving traffic from TikTok and there's nowhere to go, you know, uh, what do I do with that? You know, um, so I'm not collecting email addresses. I'm not, you know, I don't have my funnel set up. So, yeah. um, so that was, that was part of not getting started right away. But once I got rolling, mm. then I realized that, wow, I really can do this. And, yep. you know, my trajectory is, is just going to keep going up and, you know, there's going to be setbacks. I'm going to fail at some things. I know it, but, you know, when you, you realize that that process and it has to be part of the process of mistakes, you, you do need to, um, just fat, just, just look at it as, as the long haul. 
Uh, this is, you know, I tell people this is not a get rich quick scheme. It's going to take more work than, than, than you think it is. Um, you know, you're going to have to spend two to three hours a day minimum in creating content, managing your email list, um, you know, responding to people on TikTok. I, I just did a, a video the other day where I was like, oh boy, I shouldn't have done that. Um, and I asked people to type I'm in in the comments and it just blew up. And so it went viral. I've got people from all over the world telling me I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> And I, I couldn't keep up with it. And I actually did a video saying, I'm trying, I'm trying. But, you know, you guys are just, you, you just are, you know, so amazing. And, um, you know, one thing that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting a lot of is people from countries that are blocked by legendary. And I don't know, you know, I, I mean, I've been trying to figure out what to do with that. And, you know, because I, these people are so, they're desperate and mm -hmm. they don't have, they, you know, a lot of them don't have credit cards. They, they can't access the course and, you know, they're emailing me saying, ma'am, I tried this and it doesn't work. I can't, I, you know, and it just breaks my heart, um, you know, that I can't help those folks because I, I'm trying to approach yeah. this business from that, that standpoint, not so much about making money. Obviously we all want to make money, but trying to focus on how can I help people, um, you, you know, be uh, successful and, you know, be able to, you know, improve their bottom line, um, like yeah. I'm doing with mine. So, yeah, totally. Yeah, that one's a tricky one. That, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a whole nother conversation, but it's a really yeah. tricky one, especially in this industry when you're selling digital product, um, mostly just because, uh, Merchant accounts get tricky when if you ever get high refund rates or chargeback rates, mm -hmm. which we thankfully don't have. Right, um, and that's good. That's good. Yeah, it's honestly, uh, you know, for anybody who might hate on our course or hate on our products, our refund rates are ridiculously low in this industry, mm -hmm. and chargebacks are ridiculously low. But um, I think that, and that's not just our course, but it's, I think our support team is really good. I think that they're really, um, we, we handle refunds quickly if they do come up and, um, we don't really, yeah. So anyway, I, I, I just feel like our support team is a big piece of that. And mm -hmm. our community is a big piece of that when people are getting help and feeling like they're being helped. It's, it's a bigger thing than just, oh, I just bought this thing and, you know, most courses are like, you just buy this thing and, you know, you don't really yeah. hear from anybody, you right. know, it's yeah. just yeah. like you get a couple emails and whatever, but the, the whole like merchant processing and making sure that, you know, you're okay, especially in a, in a industry that, uh, or in a niche, I should say niche industry that has a bad reputation mm -hmm. or can get a bad reputation um, number one, if they start to see a lot of refunds or chargebacks or something from, you know, India or, um, some African country or something, um, yeah. then the suspicion level goes higher. And mm -hmm. then you might have to, for instance, have a certain amount of the money that you take in, uh, withheld in a reserve and, sure. um, or lots of different things. And so, right. right mostly like I just figure it out. And there's other people who will accept payments or do accept payments or whatever. And, um, you know, we could get into that, but it, mostly <laughs> I would caution those people just because that typically doesn't last super long. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, not in every case, I shouldn't say that in, in, in every case, but it's just a higher risk thing that most people in this industry aren't aware of. So they sure. go out and they create this course and it's just, everything is great. And then suddenly it's like, oh, hey, by the way, all that money in your PayPal account is gone, <laughs> you know, and yeah. it's just, and yeah. this happens in this industry over and over. So we're just trying to avoid that and just play ball in a very sort of um, green regulatory yeah. environment where we're just like not willing to take any of those risks. But I've told people in the past, you know, I think there's things you could do, um, I do think, for instance, you know, if people really wanted to get into that and go down that route, um, mm -hmm. 
you know, for instance, I know I know, know that there's people in in certain African countries who very well and very easily, even expats who could purchase something from us, mm-hmm. and they're just like, dude, like seriously, and um, yeah, and what ends up happening is so the route that I've told people to go is like, look, create some sort of free ebook or free giveaway. Maybe it's even like two or three videos. That's a, that's a course. And you just say, Hey, look, I, I get it. Can't purchase this. Here's a little mini course that I've created for you that mm-hmm. I feel like captures the heart of it and is really more what I've learned. And I put my spin on all this whole thing. And then, you know what, um, on the back end, sell them coaching, right. Or, yeah. Sell yeah. coaching through PayPal or something and just do it as a thing where it's like, Hey, look, we can do 500 bucks or a thousand bucks for a couple sessions and I'll sit down with you and I'll help you out or something. So it's funny I, you mentioned that because that's exactly what I've started doing, you know? Yeah. And, and so, yeah. um, you know, I'm people that are, you know, they, I'm able to do a zoom call with them or I'm able to do, you know, even a phone call with them. And so I've been offering uh, free consultations. You know, if you can't access the course, I can help you. I can help you get started. I can, you know, point to you some of the things that you can do. And, you know, like you said, if if it's a YouTube channel or, you know, I'm helping a lady right now who has a hairstyling salon, she does hair extensions and, um, you know, her, her business has been impacted by COVID, but she can't access the course. And she emailed me and she mm-hmm. said, can you help me? So, um, so I'm, you know, I'm got in touch with her and, you know, she's, and there's been a couple of other people who have also uh, done that as well. So I'm realizing yeah. that there's a, there's a possibility I can still help them, you know, even if it's outside of the legendary marketer space, I can still help them do do this business in, you know, with the tools and the access that they have. Yep. Um, so it is, um, you know, but I, you know, again, I don't have like I can't point to I have all these years of experience, um, but I can show them what I've done and what's been successful yeah. for me. Yeah, you've got good success. I mean, anybody who's got 80,000 followers on TikTok has figured something out. <laughs> um, that's for sure. And also, like, yeah, I, I think people undersell themselves. I really do. I think that um, one of the one of the first and early lessons I learned uh, 10 or 11 years ago was just oversell that, right? Like, mm. like, for instance, with coaching and stuff like you never know who's going to take it. So you're better off just pricing it super high. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, uh, let's say uh, sell your coaching self, whatever, sell five packages or something, five coaching sessions an hour long for like $2,000 or something. If it's your only high ticket offer mm-hmm. for like two grand and just be okay. like, here's my price. Right. Yeah. And, um, and then just put it out there. And if people don't take it, then I'm not saying you should put it out there at 2000. This is like an example, but, um, or a thousand dollars or something. Right. And right. really sit down and calculate what it would be worth for people, um, to sit down and be like, Hey, here's an inside look on everything that I do. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Everything. One of my first mentors, he, he, uh, would fly people out to Phoenix, um, for like a five grand or 10 grand thing. And all they would do is for two days, he said, you're going to just work with me. You're just Mm going to sit next to me at my desk and watch me work. And, um, and for most people, (laughs) five, 10 grand, that was like, that was like, that was life changing. I I didn't realize how much energy and time and work went into this. I didn't realize how dedicated you were. This makes so much sense why you're so Mm -hmm. successful. I need to ramp up. And that's something people can't witness until they sit next to you. And they're like, oh my gosh, this person works. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like people should oversell on the price of that. And then guess what? Like worst case is everybody that you're sending it out to can't afford it. And you run a 50% off deal, you know, Mm -hmm. for, Mm -hmm. for a weekend or something and sell it for a thousand and see if you get any takers. But if you start low, it's harder to go up. And it it leaves people a little bit more like, oh, okay, now the price is $500 more because you're running out of your time, right? So if it's a time-based thing, start it out high, discount it, run specials on it, you know, and then, um, I don't know. Anyway, 
I'm just, I'm, I'm spitballing, but. Well, no, I, that makes perfect sense though, Matt. Um, you know, I think we create our own value, right? And mm. if we undervalue ourselves, that's how other people see it too. And, yeah, you right. know, I, I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, I wasn't pricing my coaching at $2,000, but now, now that you mention it, um, you know, it makes sense. And, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I've had the mic make money online niche that I've been working that for, for several months and I'm going to continue mm -hmm. to do that, but I'm also moving, um, I'm creating a new niche, um, to help artists, uh, set up their, their businesses online and harness social media. I've started a Facebook group because my, um, significant other is an artist and I've been an artist. And so I really recognize that people struggle with this. Um, they just, yeah. they don't have an email list. They don't have, you know, they don't have a social media presence. They put a Facebook paid page up and nobody comes to it. They don't know how to run a campaign. <laughs> they don't know how to do any of this stuff. So yeah. I can, I feel I can help them with that. So, um, so that's going to be, you know, once I get this thing mastered and, and start creating, you know, reg regular income, that's going to be my, uh, my next focus, I think. And hell yeah. Um, that's i think it's a good niche because it's it's a largely unexplored niche oh wow you are so right on that i mean there's few and far between like artists that i see who go on uh, instagram or on tiktok and oh. really kill it but of all of the artists that are out yes. there oh my yeah. gosh what an untapped niche that is mm. yeah that's crazy mm -hmm. super smart i love it I don't know if, um, I, if I'm freezing or you're freezing. I think both, maybe. I've got a freeze on you. Maybe people in the comments can let us know. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, I sometimes my we're out in the country here, so sometimes my internet connection uh <laughs> well, drops I can, off. It's, um, and then it, it does it, then it comes bit. back. It does seem a little bit uh, frozen, but your audio seems fine. Oh, there it seems a little better. Um, okay. What, okay. Um, what uh, if you could give uh, for everybody who's here, uh, maybe a little newer, maybe they haven't jumped on TikTok, maybe they haven't created content, mm -hmm. they're in their two month window of waiting to create their first video. If you could go <laughs> back, what would you say to those people? I'd say just jump on it. Just, just start, just, just get, you know, don't, don't worry if you don't have your funnel set up yet, just start building your followers list and, um, you know, just start playing around with content. You know, you don't have, I mean, you don't have to have a call to action unless you've got a place to send them, but you can start building followers and start, you know, get your feet wet with your content. I, I wish if I, if I could have done it all differently, that's that's what I would have done most definitely mm -hmm. is to start just just creating content and not worry about whether you have some place to send them yet. Um, you know, once you get up to a thousand followers and you've got your funnel built and your autoresponder connected, you you'll have some place to send them then and you'll be able to put your link in your bio. And the other thing is yeah. that um, you know, your content's really important. But you you really want to um, you know take advantage of some of the trends. You want to take advantage of some of the music. I use um, mm -hmm. I use an app that alerts me to trends and that. And so I'll oh What's okay. The app? Uh, Trend talk. Trend talk. Cool. Yep. Um, and it's it's a fee, it's fee based, but it's um, so worth it. You know, I've gotten cool. I've gotten some great ideas, and what it does is it shows you, you know, here's here's what people are doing with this particular um, sound, and you know, then you can go into that and see all you know everything that people. Put your own spin on it, obviously, and use it for your business. Thank you. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, I would also recommend that people do that and, you know, but just get started, you know, don't, yeah. don't sit around for two months like I did. And spin your yeah. wheels. <laughs> what a gold nugget with Trent talk. I love that. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, you're so right. Just, just get started. Start building that following. People mm -hmm. will ask you, you know, Hey, where can I buy something? You know, and you can right. always figure it out that way. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes too, people just forget like, um, 
like earlier on, like two years ago when we were first getting started on TikTok with our community and stuff, you couldn't even put a link in the bio. Like you could you mm -hmm. couldn't even have one. So people were putting the text on the video, like like uh go to type in, you know, and <laughs> yeah. they, they would go find these domains that were easy to type in and uh type in like you know uh business builder 5000.com or you know something like that yeah. and they were people, putting people, people still do that stuff. people yeah. still do that they and still do yep yeah and i and think you're thing, right though it's just you have to get started like yeah. you can't wait for ever, for all the stars to align and and honestly even if you get started and you get some people have fomo like they think oh i'm gonna get fifty thousand followers and then you know, none of them are going to be able to buy anything from me. Well, it's like, mm -hmm. just get started with your content and get your habit mm -hmm. of one, two, three videos a day, just getting into that habit and, and in your spare time, work on funnel, eat your funnel and get your sales funnel set up or whatever, mm -hmm. and start generating leads. But yeah, I couldn't agree more. It's really, really pertinent advice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I said, if I could have done it all differently, that's definitely what I would have done. And, um, but cool. you know, it all worked out. So <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's still working out and yeah. uh, I'm just, I'm just amazed. I'm, you know, I'm at where I'm right now and cool. I'll probably be at over a hundred thousand by the end of the year um, or, or sooner because yeah. it, it just, you know, I can do a viral video and, um, and I'll, I'll gain 20,000 followers just like overnight practically, which is just amazing. It's stunning to me that it happens. Crazy. That quickly. Yeah. TikTok is, you know, you've said it before, but it, it's, I've never seen anything like it. And, you know, I struggled for years on Twitter, just trying to build up to a thousand followers. And, um, and this, <laughs> this is just nuts. It, it's, it, it's insane. And some people thought I overhyped, you know, calling it the greatest opportunity online, but it really wasn't an overhyped thing because people, mm -hmm. the only people who were saying that didn't live through 2008 to 2000, whenever TikTok started all of that time of any social media channel, YouTube, Instagram, you name it, took years and years mm -hmm. to build to anything close to 80,000 or 100,000 or you know, Calvin's got 1.2 million followers, you know, Stacy's yeah. got 500,000. Like that took years and years yeah. worth of growth. Yeah. And it, you'd be lucky if it turned into money. And the yeah. fact that that exists on TikTok and people are still sleeping on it is nuts. It's insane. So, Hey, Kim, what we're going to do is put mm -hmm. you on a list to have you back on if you'd like to come back on and we'll Absolutely. shoot a yeah. message out to you. And mm -hmm. I think, Everybody here got a lot of gold nuggets. We got a little tool that we can use and we'd love to hear more about, you know, how your uh, current business is going, how your future stuff with artists and stuff like that. Um, that's the kind of stuff that we, we would like to have more of in our community. So um, I think that that's cool. I think you're following a pretty set path of like, Hey, I've got this starting to figure out my digital skills and now how do I launch into a niche that, you know, maybe I've cared about for many years and I right. am an artist and I want to see that thrive. So um, I think that identifying that niche and everything, I would just love to hear more about that. Um, oh, so we'll, great. We'll love to have you back on. I, I, I can't wait. Yeah, that, that would be great. Thank you so much. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. See you, Kim. All right, guys, uh, give Kim a follow. You can find Kim on TikTok. I've had the handle up there. Oh, I got my dog going crazy out here. And uh, you can find her on Instagram too, uh, right there. So um, either way, follow on both. Go give her a follow on both. Um, and uh, we'll be back here tomorrow, same time. It might be Dave, it might be me. He's uh, taking his little daughter on a little daddy-daughter weekend. And uh, it might be me, it might be Dave, but either way, we'll be here at 10 a.m. Eastern and uh, with another awesome guest. Take it easy. See you. Have a good Monday. And uh, yeah.